Hello everyone and welcome to another New World Eternum video. My name is Brian if you happen to be new around here, but in today's video I want to dive into my life staff and flail build. Several of you have been asking, Brian, what is your setup? How can I adopt this uh, playstyle that you're showing off? And that's what I hope that this video is going to accomplish for you today. If you have any questions, sound off in the comments or jump into the Discord. It's absolutely free to do so and the top link in the description will get you there. But if you are into New World or MMORPGs just as a genre and you feel like I earn it, sound off in the comments below so I can welcome you to the channel just like all of these amazing people. We cover MMOs here, a lot of New World, but MMOs, that's what we like to talk about and I've got future videos about the ashes of creation alpha 2 beta you know or alpha <laughs> beta we're not there yet uh and my hands-on impressions with it because we can talk about that going forward so be sure to keep it locked to the channel and if you do find that subscribe button sound off below so i can welcome you to the channel also for those of you who are returning here are our champions you guys continue to engage with the content and i just want to say thank you so much for that let's give them a round of applause and let's go ahead and dive into this guide now longtime viewers know that i'm an avid controller player and everything i play in this game is done on the controller but for the sake of this guide to be able to point out various different things with ease i'm going to be using the keyboard and mouse in this game so if you guys have any questions about controller support and how to play it on the healer maybe we'll talk a little bit about that uh, more towards the end of this video but let's focus in on the skills or skills uh, for some reason there are words that i cannot for some reason say uh, appropriately not, not intentional uh, hopefully you can bear with me through it uh, i'm going to share with you guys like we're going to talk about sacred ground and we're going to talk about splash of light and we're going to talk about beacon these are the three skills that i am currently rocking and rolling the skills that i am not taking are divine embrace uh, orb of protection and lights embrace and there's a reason for that but you can feel free to obviously change this up uh, divine embrace is a uh, targeted spell and it does have a cast time associated with it but it does obviously get you a bigger heal overall and if you perk it out it can actually be very nice for you i tend to want to have a little bit more flexibility and mobility and so my only targeted spell ends up being sacred ground here you can see you create an area around with a three meter radius that lasts for 12 seconds any allies in the area are healed for 16 percent weapon damage every second and then i have this upgraded with holy ground this is going to help them regenerate stamina for 25 percent faster and mana for 50 percent faster while in sacred ground and then finally with anointed while allies are in sacred ground they gain 50 percent increased healing from non-consumable and life stealing healing sources so i got that fully kitted out on the left hand side again sacred protection while holding a life staff increase the amount of healing from non-consumables and lifesteal healing sources to all friendlies in your group by 10 percent i think that just overall helps out over here we've got absolved life staff heavy attacks will restore five percent of your max mana when they pass through allies which will also heal your allies wait uh when you hit with a light attack you reduce life staff cooldown abilities by five percent and intensify when you hit a, with a heavy attack gaining stacking 10 percent bonus to outgoing healing and effectiveness for 10 seconds and then i also have blissful touch light attacks now heal for 16 percent weapon damage when passing through an ally so those go really well and paired together under splash of light i've got you and all group members within 25 meters are healed for 80 percent weapon damage when activated splash of light triggers a blast around the player that deals 25 percent weapon damage and pushes all enemies within a three meter radius back 2.5 meters and then this is enhanced with uh, sacred recovery for each ally healed that is below 50 percent health you'll gain 15 percent of your max mana and then finally purify splash of light removes one debuff when it heals an ally so those are what i am rocking on the left hand side in terms of skills and perks and i take the ultimate perk divine blessing when you heal an ally below 50 percent health they are healed for 30 percent more on the protector tree i've got a couple of perks right here bend uh, light after a dodge your outgoing healing is 20 percent more effective for five seconds this actually can stack so you can kind of dodge roll a little bit and overall increase your healing output 
I've got Protector's Strength. If you have a buff or uh, all outgoing healing is also increased by 20%, Spirits United increases mana regeneration for you and group members by 3%. And then the other perk I have here is Glowing fo uh, Focus. Life Staff buffs you grant will last 20% longer. Then I take Beacon. This is where you shoot out a light projectile that deals 146% weapon damage to enemies and attaches to its targets and heals all allies in a three meter radius for 16% weapon damage each second for 10 seconds. This is enhanced with Infused Light, which makes that Beacon's area 4.5 meters and then finally with radiance blessing with beacons are going to last five seconds longer and so those are the skills and the perks that i am taking now from a logical skill per perspective i usually try and focus in on the the lowest cooldown on the closest key and so for the controller players out there if i just pick up my controller and turn it on uh, you're going to see it switch the buttons around here in just a second. And when it does that, you can see here left bumper. That's my easy, quick 11.8 you know, second cooldown ability. And then it just kind of goes up from there where sacred ground is the right bumper. And then finally left bumper and then right bumper is going to be beacon. And you can see that it has the longest cooldown of the skills. So that's just how I lay those out there personally. If you ever want to rearrange it, they're not set by how you, you select it. You can just easily change it by picking which skill that you want and it will automatically kind of refresh that for you. So you can place your skills on the most comfortable button press or uh, keyboard and mouse press that you prefer. Now, before we move into uh, the flail and shield, the two skills that I am not taking are orb of protection. This is gonna shoot out a light projectile that grants 20% fortify for 10 seconds, heals an ally for 8% of weapon damage and deals 146% weapon damage when it hits an enemy and also Blight's Embrace. This creates a 0.5 meter radius area around an ally or a location on the ground that heals the target within for 80% weapon damage plus 20% more for each life staff buff on that target. So just note, those are the things that I am saying no to in this case, but you can feel free to say yes to them. And if you do sound off, I'd love to hear more about your specific life staff build. All right, now let's jump into our flail and shield. I'd love this for its shielding ability, which is helping to protect you. It gives you kind of in a way, a little bit of a paladin sense. And when paired with the life staff as a focused healer, it also allows you to go in and deal out some really fun damage. But you can see here, I am taking all skills from the Cleric Tree, none from the Bastion Tree. We'll go over the perks that I've taken. We'll go over each of the skills here and we'll talk about them in depth. Let's start with our skills. We got Arcane Smite, Arcane Vortex, and Arcane Eruption. For Arcane Smite, you're going to leap forward and strike the ground with an Arcane Force dealing 130% weapon damage to all targets within 2.7 meters of the impact. Leave behind a hazardous area of impact to the point that inflicts a stack of impairment for 6 seconds to all targets that enter. Impairment deals 10% weapon damage per second and weakens the target, reducing their base damage by 10%. This ability also has Grit. Grit prevents you from being staggered by incoming attacks. Then I've got an enhanced with Epic Flail. Smite hits reduced its cooldown by 5% per target hit with a maximum of 5 targets allowed. Ironclad Superiority grants a bonus based on what shield type is equipped. Round Shield Smite deals 20% more base weapon damage. Kite Shield uh, Smite deals now staggering target hits, but damage is reduced to 90% weapon damage. And then Tower Shield gain 30% Fortify for six seconds when smite is activated for the final perk deflecting fragility uh, add uh, allies that enter the hazardous area gain deflecting fragility for three seconds deflecting fragility is a buff which can be received uh, when receiving an attack will inflict a stackable weakening effect to enemy attackers reducing the enemy's damage by five percent per stack for five seconds additionally while the effect is active when allies are hit they gain 10 percent life steal for three seconds and then deflecting flaility scales with focus increasing its duration for up to 12 seconds then for the arcane vortex this is a swirl the flail above the above <laughs> above the player's head dealing four rapid hits at 75 percent weapon damage in a three meter radius around the player 
After the first spin is completed, trigger a 3 meter blast of energy granting 10% in power for 5 seconds to all allies inside the radius. Arcane Voitex can be blocked, dodge, cancelled after the third attack. So, in terms of the up, uh, the upgrades here, I've got Flailbird. Hitting targets four times with the Arcane Vortex will inflict them with Root, immobilizing them for one second. Then I have Accelerated Advantage. Hitting a target with Arcane Vortex grants stacking haste on self, increasing movement speed by 7% for seven seconds. Allies within the radius of the attack are granted a 25% haste for five seconds. And then Flailing Stability. All allies within three meters of the player during Arcane Voitex are cleansed of crowd control status effects, root, stun, and slow, and are immune to them for one second. All allies inside are also healed for 65% weapon damage, healing scales exclusively with the focus stat, and crowd control immutability scales with focus increasing its duration for up to five seconds. Then for the arcane eruption, I've got drag uh, the head of the flail against the ground, causing an eruption of arcane energy in front of the player, dealing 120% weapon damage and inflicting two stacks of impairment for six seconds to all targets hit. Automatically follow up with the additional melee attack that deals 150% weapon damage and impairment deals 10% weapon damage per second and inflicts weaken, reducing their base damage by 10%. Then you've got Crippling Strike. Target hits with the first attack. Bursts are slowed, reducing their movement speed by 40% uh, for three seconds. And then finally, Supportive Blessing. The follow-up attack consumes one stack of impairment on the target hit, triggering a chain that will bounce up to four times to allies within three, uh, six meters of the player, granting 130% of its total damage as health to each ally it chains to and 50% of its total damage to self. Now, what I chose not to take is debilitation uh, extension. It says the follow-up attack extends the duration of all debilitated uh, status effects, Ren, Weak, and Exhaust Disease on the target by 30%. So I went with the healing. That is going to be primarily up to you. We'll get to the ultimate perk in a second. Let's look at the perks that I've got selected. Oppressive Advantage, abilities to hit attacks and hits against targets with less than 50% health, increasing incoming healing by 5% and gain 10% haste to self for three seconds. Incoming healing increases scales with focus, increasing its power up to 20%. And then weighted superiority, grant cooldown reduction based off the actions performed in different equipped loads. Heavy is going to be a 1% cooldown reduction when hit blocking a hit. Medium, 5% cooldown reduction when dodging an attack. Light, 1% cooldown reduction when hitting a target. So this is going to be effective when we talk about my gear setup. Then you see Happy Flails hitting a target with the basic attack within three seconds of using the ability will inflict exhaust, reducing stamina regen rate by 15% for five seconds. Then you've got Vital Embrace. While at or below 50% health, all flail attacks grant 3% lifesteal while attacking targets. While above 50% uh, health, all flail attacks extend the duration of damage over time effects on the target by 7%. Leader of the pack, when all no allies are within five meters, all flail attacks deal 15% more base damage. When one or more ally are within five meters, they gain in power, increasing their damage dealt by 10%. So it's a little bit of buff for you. And if no, if no one's around and if someone's around, it's a buff for them. So this is really where you want to be stacked up with your team. Now, uh, the ultimate perk I take here is better together. While near one or more allies grant passive healing to self and all allies that heal for 16% weapon damage every three seconds. Range of heal aura varies based off of what equipment load the player has. Light's gonna be a five meter radius of effect, medium four meter radius of effect, and heavy a three meter raise, uh, you know, a radius of effect. And obviously this scales again off of focus. Now on the Bastion tree, let's talk about what I did take, uh, Vital Suppressant. While at or above 50% health, reduce damage taken by 4%. While below 50% health, reduce all attack stamina damage dealt while blocking by 10%. And then finally, reductive superiority grants status effect duration modifications on self based off of what shield type is equipped. Round shield increases the base duration of all limited duration buffs on player by 10%. Kite shield decrease base duration of damage over time and debilitating effects on the player by 10 and tower shield decrease base duration of crowd control effects on player by 10%. 
For the skills that I chose not to take, we've got Barrage, Sprint Forward up to 10 meters upon reactivating the ability, pressing the basic attack or reaching the end of the sprint, leap forward up to an additional three meters and slam the ground, dealing 30% weapon damage to targets in range of the flail during the leap, 80% of the weapon damage upon landing, staggering targets on impact. Then you have trip, swing the flail forward, latching onto a target, dealing 50% weapon damage and knocking them to the ground. And then finally warding bludgeon, perform a spinning leap, and then swing the flail down and strike the targets, dealing 100% weapon damage. While leaping, trigger a burst of energy, granting a reinforged fortify to self and all allies within three meters of the player, increasing armor by 50% for eight seconds until three hits are taken. This ability also comes with grit and it is taunt gym compatible if you're looking at building out a tank. So those are the skills. Now let's jump into the gear. We've got uh, right now gear score level 700. We're gonna see about trying to push that up over the course of the rest of the season and so much more. You can see here the life staff that I've got. Rune Wood, life staff of the Sage. And you can see here all the different stats, 38 uh, points of focus, ignited rally, 12% damage to outgoing healing uh, and outgoing healing while at full health. Uh, hits inflict burn, dealing 8% fire damage per second for two seconds with perk max stacks of one it's also got keen a seven percent critical chance blessed 12 percent outgoing healing efficiency and keen beacon while beacon heals the player they gain 11 percent critical chance for six seconds and it stacks up to one time so you can see here this life staff pairs well with the beacon ability that i have equipped then i've got mithril flail of the sage here from the stats perspective, you can see 38 focus, electrical reticle, gain a stack of 8% damage for five seconds after blocking or taking a hit. This can stack up to three times. Hits inflict surge, dealing 8% lightning damage per second for two seconds with a max perk of one. Another blessed 12% outgoing healing efficiency, life stealing, heal for 7.1% of the damage you deal does not trigger off persistent damage or dot effects. And then finally enchanted light and heavy attacks deal 5% increased damage. And for my rune stone, I'm still rocking a minor heart rune of stone form. I've got this equipped. It's great for survivability. And as I need to spend more time investing in it, that's what I like. But you can always take many of the other stone uh, rune stones to really truly change up how you decide to play the game. So continue to play around with that. This isn't as critical to the build, but it is something that's nice, especially when I'm soloing and want a little bit extra uh, life, <laughs> a little bit extra defense. On the left-hand side, you can see here, I'm in light. This is gonna give me that base damage increase of 15%. Outgoing healing increased by 30. Block stability, minus 10. Your dodge is a quick roll. The stamina cost is gonna be 50, and for one second after taking a melee hit, dodge distance is reduced by 20%, and you cannot run. For PvP, critical damage taken is uh, reduced by 15% as well. And this is basically the setup of the skills. You can see here, obviously, a uh, focus on focus. Those are the stats. We'll go through my uh, all my attributes here in a second, as well as just various different stats that you're looking for. This is where I'm not going to make too many recommendations. I'm just going to show you guys on screen what I'm currently rocking and rolling, and you can choose what you feel works best for you. From an artifact perspective, I am currently rocking the Tumblr Feet Wraps. Uh, this is something I'm actually needing to get a gym for and get that slotted. If you guys are at the level cap, you're going to want to start looking into the gym game to make sure that you're adding in as many benefits to your player as possible. Note that that is still on my to do list. But then we go into uh, you know, my shield and you can see here I'm rocking the round shield and back into the skills section and the, and the perks that basically changes up how some of uh, those those benefits, uh, you know, net me. So you guys can check it out. So pay attention to which shield you have equipped because it is the flail and shield with the life staff. That is where we got at that. And then over on my, uh, my I guess, trinkets, you got the Phoenix artifact. Uh, this has this cool, when you uh, react, <laughs> Receive lethal damage, you avoid death and gain 100% of your max health, then become inflicted with vengeance, reducing healing by 200% and taking damage equal to 20% of your max health every second until you die or get a kill. Uh, this is uh, just a fun one. I, I, I absolutely highly recommend it. I'm still working on the quest to unlock all the various different uh, extra perks for it. Then I've got 
a, a legendary uh, ring, the imbued Mithril crafted ring for the sage with 30% focus, sacred outgoing healing efficiency, hardy, 10% max stamina, purifying heart on heart rune loses all debuffs and perk stack, and then elemental ward there. And then finally, my earring, you got again the focus, elemental ward four, 2% elemental damage absorption, heavy toast when you drink mana potion, gain 50% of your base health, refreshing, reduce max cooldowns by 4%. And then refreshing toast consumables cooldowns are reduced by 10 percent now let's jump into our attributes again you can always be respecting these as necessary but you can see here i am rocking 402 attributes of focus and you can see which weapons are actually benefiting from it because it's got this nice little circle uh, effect here and it tells you what that damage scale split is and then i've got some constitution pushing up into the 160s which gives me 1400 and 900 uh, 14973 max health and it'll tell you kind of the damage of the different weapons obviously i can switch this up and change it up and i do like to focus in on focus food to truly unlock all these different perks so let's go through it at 25 points you get five percent ability cooldown reduction and a five percent chance to catch a larger fish at 50, you get 10% incoming healing and 3% fishing cast distance. At 100, you get 20% mana regenerate and increased max mana by 20% of the base value with also an increase of 50 encumbrance. Then at 150, you get 20% outgoing healing effectiveness and minus 10% carry weight on fish. Then at 200, you get 20% buff duration and a 15% chance to catch larger fish. Then kills and groups kills grant stacks of blessed increase outgoing healing by 1% per stack for 20 seconds personal kills grant two stacks group AI kills grants one stacks max uh, 15 stacks with a 20% chance to catch larger fish the other thing is guys I'm a big fisher in this game and I really <laughs> you can see here how I got this energy rocking and rolling then over here at 300 points grant 20% fortify for 10 seconds when healing allies and your mana is at above 50% 60 second cooldown per ally 10% cooldown reduction for in fast travel and then finally at 350 points reduce all ability cooldowns by 20% of their max durations upon activating a heart rune ability 10% chance at finding rare items while fishing under constitution at 25 points all health consumables are 10% stronger 10% logging speed as well uh, at 50 points, 5% physical armor, 1.5% chance of finding rare items while gathering. Then at 100 points, increase max health by 10% for the base value with an increase of 50 encumbrance. Then at 150, minus 10 to critical damage taken, minus 10 to weight of logging items. And then we just can kind of go from there, but I don't have enough. But you can always use food. Like I could use food to probably push me up to 200. Uh, and that gives me a 10% uh, increase of in physical and elemental armor and 20% logging speed. So just gotta pay attention to these different milestones. Obviously I could lower this down. You can see here where those points are coming from. So I've assigned 70 points to focus. I'm getting 268 from my gear and my item buffs are attributing to 64 additional points of focus in this case. Now I wanna wrap up from a, just a guide perspective on healing within the settings. Under your settings game, you're gonna see a section here for targeted healing. I keep that on. You can turn that off if you choose, but I prefer it, especially with controller. You can see here I've got camera follows locked on target, camera aim retargeting, meaning you can change who you're targeting with by just adjusting uh, the, uh, the area of the camera or the right stick if you're on controller. Sticky lock sets whether to enable maintaining target after performing heals. So if you wanted to turn this off and go back into fighting the enemy, you can do this. I kind of like keeping sticky lock on, which allows me to maintain that group targeting until I disengage and then retarget uh, the enemy. It's gonna be up to you on what you wanna choose with that. Uh, lock camera to target when healing, set whether to enable camera target when starting a life staff ability. I've got that turned on. Swap enemy and ally target lock input with life staff. So whether you want to swap bindings for ally and enemy target lock while using the life staff. I think this is on by default. I've been playing around with it in an off state and I feel like this is the comfortable one with sticky lock on and this currently off, but maybe you might want to switch these two around and see how that feels. So I'd play around with that and see what works best for you. 
I have group mode set to on, group only in raid set to off, target uh, raid targeting via hotkeys set to off, and then show hotkey hints in the raid currently set to on. And that is where I've got the healing set up uh, and those various different settings. Now, for me, when I play MMORPGs, I tend to gravitate into that healer role. I also like playing as a tank. I also like playing as a caster, but I tend to also find just a lot of comfort in being both a damage dealing healer and a healer. And that's what I think my build really does present, especially when I play on controller. I get a lot of flexibility to be able to stay back and heal and also and protect my party. And then if things are going really well, very easily switch into more enough offensive that is still providing that outgoing healing through the flail. You can obviously take other weapons that could that could complement, like the Void Gauntlet is another one. If you're ever curious as to what weapons to take, let's jump back into our attributes and you can see which weapons are gonna benefit from which different skills. And you can see here Void Gauntlet will also scale off of the focus ability. So just note that you can kind of have a lot of different things and artifacts themselves will and have the ability to actually truly impact your play style. They can really change it up because they can switch up which stats they use. Gyms also have that same kind of effect. So there's a wide range of things that you can do and you can play as. But that is the point in the video where I think it's time we transition into our message of hope. Today's talk is really focusing in on me, you know, in this regards. I issue challenges, I think, especially as men, we we like, you know, like challenges. Like, I, I don't know, maybe you, you don't, but for me, I always kind of feel like in a sense of excitement and a sense of, you know, wonder of like, yes, I can get this done. So I want to talk to you guys, the things that I'm challenging myself to, not necessarily as a comparison to me, don't compare anybody, don't compare yourself to others. Comparison is the thief of joy after all, but just as a way of just giving you maybe some ideas of things that you could do in your life to really truly challenge yourself. As we go into the winter you know, season, I've shared before, I get sad. That's the seasonal defective disorder where I, uh, you know, have seasonal depression. And I, I kind of offset that with going to the gym and obviously taking vitamin D. Those two things tend to really help me combat that weirdness in my body and my life. And so that is a challenge, like going to the gym two to three times a week, also making sure I'm taking my vitamin D on a daily basis. Other challenges that I've got rocking and rolling for me now as well is I'm trying to lose over 120 pounds. I'm currently 80 pounds in down into that journey and we're gonna keep rocking and rolling with it. So that constant challenge is how I do it. I'm not eating sugar, I, like I'm not eating fruit. There's a lot, there's certain foods groups that I just, I can easily for some reason say no to. So that's, that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm focusing in on. And then, yeah, that's going to be, and then the final challenge is I'm trying to commit to a daily rosary uh, as just a natural part of the prayer life. For those of you, I, I continue to talk about, we should really be focusing in on both our mental, our physical, or I guess all three and our spiritual health. These are three pillars that make up who you are. And I don't really care what you believe. You don't have to believe in anything or you can believe in all kinds of different things that we wouldn't agree on. But I just want to talk to you about those three pillars. And so that's the challenges that I'm working on in my life, physical, spiritual, and mental. And so those are what I'm doing. And hopefully that gives you some ideas of what's going on behind the camera and behind the games and the streams here. And hopefully it gives you maybe some ideas of things to try out in your own life. Thank you guys so much for your time today. God bless each and every one of you. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. But until then, take care.